thank you to join to these conversations. It is, and it will, yeah, it, it is great to have you here. But now that you are now about to open an exhibition in Bogota, and actually curated by um, uh, Santiago Rueda, who is a, a photography curator. Yeah, I feel very, very fortunate to uh, uh, to have been invited by the Colombo to to have this exhibition. Uh, it was originally going to happen in, in 2020, and then the pandemic hit. They've they've sent me pictures and video of the exhibition. It opened today, so from yesterday, and it looks great. It looks so beautiful, so wonderful. I'm so grateful, and it's too bad I'm not there. Thank you, Matt. So why don't we start, Matthew, about you know how did you get involved in photography as an artist? Um, I studied zoology when I was in college at UC Berkeley and I thought I was going to be a veterinarian when I was in high school and younger I wanted I loved animals I wanted to be a veterinarian um, but then um, when I was studying science I liked it I found it interesting but I didn't have the passion for it that my professors had or you know and I worked for a veterinarian and I didn't really find it very interesting it was kind of mundane and I was more and more attracted to kind of uh, creative stuff and self-expression and um, photography, that kind of photography kind of allowed me to do that. And I started uh, shooting a bunch of uh, pictures, borrowed cameras, and I liked it. And so during the summer, I would take photography classes and darkroom classes. And um, then I would uh, go back to science during the school year. Uh, and then I, I got I liked it and people responded well and I just started doing it and, I, and it, I, I didn't imagine a better alternative, <laughs> you know. I was going to mention, you know, that when we met in, in PhotoFest, one of the things that uh, called me most attention, and I don't know if it was at the beginning of your career or something, was this this issue of, of cowboys in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the first people who came here were people of the Spanish Empire who came north from Mexico. And then that led to this big ranching culture, you know, where cowboys come from and all the Spanish language that was incorporated into English from, you know, cow La Reata became Larry, you know, a lot of words. Uh, Baquero became Buckaroo. Um, <laughs> anyway, my cousins had ranched there for many generations and they were ranchers. And then when I got older, I realized, oh, this is disappearing. And I found it um, really interesting visually. I found it interesting culturally and, and visually. And I wanted to try and convey some of that. And um, that was the project where people responded well to the pictures I was taking. And I was real passionate about it. And I felt I was on a mission. And I was doing all that dark room. It was all film and me printing them in a dark room. So it was very slow. But it was because also there was lots of uh, real estate developers. I understand that, you know, they were like an extension, these cowboys. Yes, that's right. That's what happened. They, they, there's more money in building homes than in cattle or any other kind of agriculture. So uh, there's a lot of pressure on, you know, it's hard to run a ranch when your neighbors are, are uh, you know, suburban homes and and then the taxes get high and so so it's been disappeared. It's more valuable the land for homes and for agriculture. And that's the basic idea. How did you end up going, like, I think to South Asia or something to do projects there? Because it's more or less the same way you ended up somehow going to Colombia to do some photographic assignments or something. But tell us a little bit about the experience in South Asia. Sure. So I first went there for uh... Uh, a friend's wedding, an American friend married a Thai woman, and I went for the wedding and then stayed around. But I also had another uh, very good friend from Thailand who uh, lived in Berkeley for a while and we became friends. And then when she moved back, um, for my 50th birthday, in fact, my treat was to take a vacation there. And um, because of her, who knows people and stuff, and she, she belongs to a ethnic minority group called the Karen, which is on both sides of the border in Thailand and Burma. And uh, so she put me in touch with a, a Jesuit priest, in fact, who does really interesting work. He crosses the border, you know, illegally crossing a river 
and kind of helps these villages, a lot of whom are refugees from this horrible war that the Burmese army are perpetrating on a lot of different ethnic minorities there. So I made a film uh, about that experience. And, and, well, a little bit about that, but it, it's mostly about young, uh, young students from Burma who are getting a chance to get an education in Thailand and kind of like their dreams. And, and that's the story I made. So. Okay. Now, before we talk about your the love letter to Colombia and know that papaya. Yeah. Well, I came to Colombia because I uh, had friends in, in California and who, Colombians. And so because of those friendships, I got to know more about Colombia, you know, it, that it, it piqued my interest. So uh, uh, a, a Colombian friend here mentioned, um, you know, Concurso Nacional de Bellas, and I, I looked it up and um, I couldn't learn as much back then because the internet was still kind of young then. But um, anyway, I worked out where I was able to go and I got a press credential and all that. And uh, I, I was imagining, gosh, how, how in the world can you spend 19 days on a beauty contest? I wonder what they exactly. do. Exactly, yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> so it was just a, a great, fantastic, unique way to get to know Colombia. And one of the reasons that I really wanted to go, to, why that seemed interesting to me, wasn't a beauty contest in and of itself, because I've never even been to a beauty contest here. I, I, they're not that interesting to me. But I had read that there's a Concurso Nacional, and then there's also a Reinado Popular. Exactly. And I read about those differences and stuff, and I thought, oh, that's interesting, because then you kind of society from a point of view of like uh, concepts of beauty, but also, um, you know, ideas of race and class, and, and that seemed to, you know, that's an interesting topic for me here in the United States, and I'm, it seemed like it'd be really interesting in Colombia, and in the context of a beauty contest, it seemed like it was a lot of it would be a lot of fun. And I found myself really inspired and to, to, to work hard to make these pictures. And I was just responding to what, it was all new to me, you know? Yes. And, and I was working with a lab in Cartagena that was making little four by six prints. And, and I brought you, I brought a bunch with me and I showed them to you. And uh, that's when you suggested, you know, we exhibit it at the Colombo the next year, which was wonderful. Then the exhibition became like a traveling exhibition somehow. And it ended up going the next year to the Museum of Modern Art of Cartagena with Eduardo Hernandez. I shot the pictures in 2003, and then I was invited by you to come to Colombia to exhibit in Medellin and teach a workshop there. And be, but before that, I went to Manizales and taught a workshop at um, the Universidad de Caldas through the Colombo de Manizales with Clara. Yes. Uh, so then Manizales went to Medellin and there was the opening there and it was wonderful. Everybody liked it. Nobody had any negative, anything negative to say. It was great because the pictures from Royal Columbia, they're not critical. You know, it, it shows the fun, it shows the beauty and it, it's, it doesn't, it's not just pictures of beauty queens. It's a lot, it's a lot of the people, people in, you know, the public, because that was really interesting to me. And, um, so I, I, I anticipated it was, it was going to be like a dream come true. I was going to share this work in Cartagena where I actually took the pictures and I was, you know, I was very naive and I thought, oh, some of these people in the pictures, humble people, let's say, you know, they might come to the exhibition and see themselves exalted in these beautiful prints. And, and that's what I was thinking. And that's not at all what happened <laughs> because the owner of the beauty contest uh, had heard about some, I don't know, I don't know, he got some concept about the exhibition that he felt, uh, he felt that they needed to take legal action against me or something. And it was really strange. So he, he sent out some kind of memo, well, a memo to the print, to the, to the press mm -hmm. saying there's a, there's an exhibition at the um, Museo yeah. And if you cover it, we may revoke your credential, your press credential to cover the concurso. So my dream of like sharing this with the Colombian public didn't come to pass. And what was surprising to me was the year before, um, I got, you know, Raimundo Angulo would say to me, he would say to other like journalists, 
bueno, este, este vino de San Francisco a cubrir el, el, el concurso. Hablo con él. You know, I was like, you know, they liked me. And I got along with all the, uh, with all the medios. I knew people from RCN and Caracol because you saw each other every day and people were friendly. So then I thought with my exhibition, there'd be a lot of coverage, but there wasn't because, um, because Raimundo decided that, you know, I think he just exhibited a great deal of ignorance thinking I was trying to make money when you don't make money from an exhibition like that. And, and I remember Tato Gomez, yes, the photographer, exactly. remember him? Yes. Anyway, so when I was, he called me when I was in Cartagena, he said, hey, how's it going? And I told him what happened. And he said to me, ah, es que te dije, todo acá es una mafia. And I don't belong to the mafia de belleza. So you're out, bro, you're out. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but uh, but have have the owner of, of the contest. Uh, I mean, I mean, what was his reason? What what do you think? What was his reason for? Well, well, I, I think he 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 thought I, I, that someone was making money off of his contest, and 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 you can't make money off of my contest. He said it's an exhibition, no autorizada. And it's like, well, it's not up to you to authorize exhibitions of my photography. You know, as a result of that experience, I started asking around to other people. I go, what's up with this? And then, then I started to hear a lot of the reality about the concurso and about Raimundo. You know, and 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 I had a more cynical. Look. The, the photos don't show any cynicism. The photos are all celebratory. But then that, that following year, I, I got a, a more realistic look at some of the aspects of the exploitation and, and, and the fachada. All that, I came away with the, with the feeling that all that stuff about obras sociales, obras sociales, ah, it's just a fachada for a negocio that exploits the, the, the contestants. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. great to know your, your perception. Let's uh, talk about No Dar Papaya. Well, sure. Um, the first pictures, picture, some pictures in the book, I took on my very first visit to Colombia in 2003. I was shooting a beauty contest with 35 millimeter film, but I just had this idea. I, I loved my little, that Polaroid camera. I yeah. never used it on a project. I just take a few pictures of family and friends. And I always liked it, I always liked the look. And so I thought, you know, Colombia, it seems, before I'd been, it seems kind of like colorful and tropical. Maybe I could do something with uh, this Polaroid. And I made a few pictures, uh, including of some beauty queens. A couple of them, of uh, beauty queen pictures are in the book and a few more. And then when I came back the following year, I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe I can do a project with this Polaroid. It's kind of interesting. I was kind of tired of doing 35 millimeter work and Polaroid, uh, represented a, a, a different way of working. You have to be a lot more deliberate. You know, you don't take a lot of pictures because the film's expensive and because it, it comes out of the camera, it, it changes the dynamic. And and so I like that idea. And I thought, well, instead of like some intensive kind of documentary thing about this part or that part of Colombia, let me just kind of have a more diffuse kind of impressionistic kind of thing where I can go around and I don't have any parameters. So I, I worked on that project for 11 years. So uh, my use of the medium kind of evolved. I, I, I realized, you know, using landscapes more. And then also my understanding of Colombia evolved too. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And that's reflected in the pictures too. Um, and uh, what's also reflected is people I know, some people in the photos uh, I know or I knew, you know, like uh, the students from CEFA, for example, that the, there were some CEFA students. So of course I knew them. Um, some of my students from La Universidad de Antioquia are in one of the pictures and some friends are in other pictures and uh, a lot of photography, at least the way I do photography, is uh, has to do with rapport with the people you're photographing and so so I of course I have rapport with people I already know and are friends friend I'm friends with but like people I would just meet maybe in Colombia because I'd see them doing something that would be intriguing or the, the whole scene would be intriguing I thought gosh I'd like to make a photo So, uh, you know, I would just talk to people, people from say humble classes, they appreciate that I'm not classista. You know what I mean? They appreciate that uh, I'll talk and have a, an interesting, I'll be interested in what they do or what they have to say. 
and they they recognized me wanting to take a picture of them as sort of honoring them you know that they're worthy of a picture you know and i i, I wonder if plus my accent uh, i wonder if that has something to do with how people respond to me too you know yes yeah and, and something interesting that you mentioned is like every house that you went and you know they, they always have a, a, a mixture you know and they offer you juice you know like we have fruit everywhere and juice everywhere and finally you found out from where the lulu grows yeah yeah kind of that lulu is a gift from god <laughs> Was this great fruit <laughs> that nobody in the United States has ever heard of. So yeah. I love this juice. I drink it anywhere I could. And uh, but I had no and I'd seen it, I'd bought it many times in markets, but I, I didn't know how it grew. And then one day I was in Salento in um and I was just walking around and I saw this tiny little plot of land with and I saw lulo growing on a tree. So I had I I, I had my Polaroid of course, so I had to try and figure out a way to that's my homenaje a lulo. My homage to Lulo, yeah. Yeah. How about going to La Guajira? That must have been very, you know, they were telling you to like, don't go, it's yes. too dangerous and stuff like yeah. that. And then somehow you managed to be in contact with people and capture yes. the humanness of, of them. Yes, they were, I, I found, uh, you know, I wasn't, to tell you the truth, La Guajira, La Guajira I'd heard about it and seemed dry in a desert. And that, that just didn't seem that interesting to me, you know, but a friend had suggested it. And then I found myself in Santa Marta for uh, Christmas and New Year's. And uh, I, I love it. It's such a beautiful landscape. And you see the difficult circumstances that a lot of those children live in. And it makes your heart sink, you know? Yeah. Yes. Uh, there is also uh, some lovely pictures of of this of students of uh in relation to like you know you mentioned that colombians are very creative and a fact that you say is that when you were teaching at the sena there was Cefa. A, a cefa sorry that there was a <laughs> a, 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 a contest or fashion contest tell us about that yeah. Matt. Yeah. well yeah well i noticed it i noticed it like uh there'd be street parades too And, and you'd see a lot of people on stilts and they made these really interesting costumes and stuff. And, and they dance so beautifully and so skillfully. And you know, they put a lot of work into that because they're all dancing in unison, you know? And I, 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 I kind of realized, wow, there's an, appre there's an appreciation here for that sort of, um, for, for, for art is just self-expression. No, no one's gonna, no one's making a career out of that. This is just kind of who they are, you know, they're, they're putting effort into this because it matters. Great, great, okay. You, you say that those images in that letter to to Colombia, no dar papaya, it says that, you know, that so that one day we will learn to live in peace, Colombians. And I think, you know, as we revise your photographs and we see you know, the, 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 the wonderful people that Colombians are and the creativity to sort of eventually, one day we can live in peace. I think it would be worth, you know, your effort of your letter to Colombia. Thank you. Well, okay. one thing that I found interesting was Santiago, the curator in Bogota who put this show together. Uh, he, he talked about it in terms of like, because you know, I'm, I'm a foreigner. But so it's interesting to me to see how Colombians might regard this work. And I shot it now, some of the pictures, 2003, that's almost 20 years ago. Um, mm. The first ones, of course, the later ones are more like 10 years ago. And um, I think he, he kind of sees it too as like kind of a, at least when we originally talked about it, since then, so many, hor so many horrible things have happened, but kind of as like kind of a celebration of, celebration of Colombians and, and the beauty of it after moving through this difficult period. But to be honest with you, sometimes I, re I read articles and see videos about some of the stuff happening in Colombia. These are great questions to, to, yeah, to ask him, uh, to, to ask Santiago Rueda what he thinks about his opinion of your yeah. work before, that they were celebrating the aftermath or the after, 
uh, peace uh, agreement now yeah. with this uh, again like i mean it's very visible the violence again but i mean uh, as you were saying like someday we are going to live in peace but i think it's 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 going to be i mean it is very easy for colombians to learn how to live in peace the thing is that i mean it, it takes time it takes time it takes generations to to adapt to a new new way of thinking and still we are the happiest ones in the world <laughs> just round it up this talk uh matt you know how did you define about this no dar papaya the term no dar papaya means don't show any vulnerabilities or any openings for anyone to take advantage of you and that could be physically so they don't rob you but it could also be so they don't take advantage of you in, in, in other ways you know and um it's good for people to know that <laughs> good no i think that i'm glad that the, the the title of your exhibition and and your publication it calls the attention to to many and it describes kind of the uh, the reality of colombia too i mean honestly if you dust papaya <laughs> well how does it go uh papaya dejadas papaya partida or something something like that right <laughs> oh. <laughs> i want to thank you matt for you for your time and your dedication and we look forward for your next visit to colombia thank you Juan Alberto. i want to thank you for all your support and encouragement over the years and opportunities. And thank you, Alejandro, for filming this and making this into what it's going to be. Yeah.